Welcome to the NEPA Scene Podcast. We're coming to you live from Cole Creative in downtown Wilkes-Barre. I'm Rich Howells. I'm the founder and editor of NEPA Scene. I'm John Popko from uh, Time Shamrock Communications with uh, Rock 107, ESPN Radio, and Alt 21. And I'm also the Saturday night host of Alt Natives on Alt 21 at 9 o'clock. Uh, a show that uh, Dustin refuses to be a part of. So, not true. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> Well, well happy to have him here. He, he is allowed to be on our show. It's he has sh- agreed to be on our sure. show. So, oh, yeah, uh, What's your show? I, I was unaware of this invitation. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I've actually come into uh, Music Around quite often and solicit for the music. And he said, fuck you, John. It's not what I said. That's basically. <laughs> oh, bro. All right. More or less. You're paraphrasing, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I may have added the F word in there. But, uh, there are actually a lot more. Yeah. You know, a few is in there actually, right. but he yeah, just paraphrased yeah. out of one. And we're actually late tonight. We're actually late tonight. Uh, it's not my fault. It's not Rich's fault. It's not uh, Cole Creative's fault. Dustin took a little too long going doing his hair. Today. <laughs> <laughs> right. Look at look at this. Good. It's about fifteen minutes for each centimeter. Yeah, actually, it doesn't, doesn't happen in five minutes. Yeah. So uh, I'm sorry, everybody. I apologize. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so these guys are a uh, blues rock trio called Dustin Douglas and the Electric Gentleman. Uh, they're going to be playing a Stevie Ray Vaughan tribute uh, this Saturday at the FM Kirby Center uh, in Wilkes-Barre, right next door. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the blues in general, uh, the uh, uh, music industry. We're going to talk about uh, some of the things they've done in the past, uh, what they're up to currently. Uh, keeping the blues uh, uh, relevant and interesting in the 21st century. So please uh, leave your questions, your comments, anything you want to say to us, anything you want to say to these guys, write down in the comments, and uh, we'll definitely address those at some point in the show. Hair tips for Dustin. <laughs> Hair tips, if you'd like. Sure. Get him out of the door. Better. I can't I'm offer just... any of those. So. <laughs> yeah. I'll, obviously, I'll take hair tips for anything that helps. Well, the progressively yeah, receding. Yeah. It's called a hat. Apex. <laughs> yeah, that's why I yeah. wear it. See, I just so gave the hat. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I mean, you can only fold it in so many directions before. I have to turn fold it. <laughs> fold, fold, fold it. Fold it. Sometimes you got to fold your hair. Fold, <laughs> fold yeah. the clothes and your hair. I actually rate my days based upon coverage, actually. Yeah. So, so. What, what's today? Today? Uh, it's about above average coverage. Okay. I feel pretty confident. All right. Yeah. I also rate my days on Matt's coverage. <laughs> <laughs> Not of hair, though. <laughs> okay, anyways. <laughs> So, uh, as if we're not loose enough already, we got some beer to drink uh, from our sponsor, Beer Boys, in downtown Wilkes-Barre as well. Yeah. Uh, so, what do we what do we have uh, this time? Well, before we get started, they are doing a tap takeover with Sierra Nevada, which is uh, going on right now until they close. But uh, I got some good beers there, good crowd already. So, uh, if you like Sierra Nevada, go there. Yeah, we talked about they that last a, week. Yeah, they have a cask of uh, some kind of celebration by... Uh, it's a celebration IPA mm-hmm. from Sierra Nevada, which is super rare. So if you uh, are a beer snob and want to get a uh, beer you can't find anywhere else, go to Beer Boys. North Washington Street in Wilkes-Barre. All right. I love that plug. That was, that was pretty good. 72 beers on tap. 72 beers on tap. So another beer you can only find at Beer Boys is the uh, Hammerheart uh, Brewing. It's the, uh, I can't ever say this, the Skolock Haiti through the Randall of Tootsie Rolls. That's is that really the name of it? Yeah. Well, the, the Hammerheart is the name of the brewing company, but the Randall is a way to infuse flavors. Oh, uh, where beer. they draw through the spices right. and the fruits. And right. all that. So this is uh, Tootsie Rolls. Which you can only get at Beer Boys. Right, exactly. So go to Beer Boys. Uh, Atwater Brewing, Nitro, Vanilla, Java Porter. And uh, the Blockhouse Brewing Company, Double Chocolate Bock. Hmm. So which one are we starting with? Well, typically we go with the uh, the Randall one. You want to go with the Randall yeah. first? Is that right. the Tootsie Roll? Yeah, that's yeah. the Tootsie Roll one. That's, wait, what was the full name of, the, of that again? <laughs> <laughs> Hammerheart Brewing Skull Ock Haiti, I think it's called. I, oh, I, man. I'm totally that, screwing that, that up. Sounds looks, like, looks like, uh, like it's Swedish or something. I don't know. Sounds like my first uh, sexual experience. Dude, I'm just sniffing it. It's dark. Dark like my heart. There you go, Tom. <laughs> or dark like Tom's lungs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Thank you, Rich. 
Yeah. Oh man, it does smell like a tootsie roll. Oh, it does. definitely does. Yeah. Well, cheers. Thank you guys. Well, for gentlemen, having yes, us. Thank, thank you for having us. Awesome. This is a quite a pleasure. Gerard. Surprisingly, uh, not as sweet as you would think with the Tootsie Rolls in it. It's got a sweetness to it, but not nearly as strong as you would think. Yeah. It's good. You can really taste the Tootsie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought it was going to be darker than that. It, darker than that? No, I thought it was going to be like, taste darker. darker. Yeah, it's like oil. Oh, yeah, I mean, I like my dark. He was like, yeah. he realized that like I operate in like 19 different shades of black <laughs> on any given day, so... These are all darker beers tonight. This is yeah. like a this is like a stout. You know, there's a porter, a bock, chocolate bock. Double right. chocolate. Yeah. So as long as you guys Should are into that, night, yeah. they're all good. Uh, so we also want to give a shout out to our other sponsor, the Keys in downtown Scranton. Uh, this Thursday is their open mic. Uh, Static in the Attic is playing Friday. If you haven't seen them yet, they're uh, amazing. Uh, and uh, Saturday is uh, an original songwriter showcase uh, with Little Star Run, Amanda Rogan. Uh, the Charming Beards, and uh, Kali Ma and the Garland of Arms, who uh, if you were at our uh, open mic last night or if you saw the live stream uh, on our Facebook page, uh, they, they actually won the audience vote last night. So uh, they'll be on the, in the finals on uh, December 19th, so that's pretty cool. And, uh, and they, were, they were awesome. They were really good, well-deserved well <coughs> uh, win. We also want to shout out uh, the, the Kirby Center. Uh, who obviously has uh, these gentlemen right here uh, on no November 18th, uh, Night Ranger and Lover Boy on November 24th, uh, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer on November 29th, and uh, Jennifer Nettles on November 30th. So uh, a lot of good stuff going on there this month. And uh, we also want to shout out to uh, Loyalty Barbershop and Shave Parlor, who have uh, locations in Scranton, Archibald, and uh, the new one in uh, Wilkes-Barre on South Main Street. Uh, the old uh, Cafe Metro used to be. We uh, Actually, one of their barbers comes down and hangs out with us at, uh, the, uh, at the open mic. So that's always pretty cool. That's nice. All right. So let's get to, let's get to the, the, these gentlemen here. You want to start us off? With what? Whatever you want to know. What do you want to know about them? Why do you refuse to be on all Stop Vegas? it. It's on not all true. true. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we will never turn down radio airplay it's hard <laughs> enough to get it you know and i didn't have to you're just asking for free you know i don't have to hug you he he really he really just wants you know uh, some extra you know i know man i feel uh, it's like payola. yeah you know you know how these media people it's payola. are <laughs> next question <laughs> next question <laughs> all right so uh what, what was your introduction to uh to the blues to blues music um ironically i mean when I was younger, when I was a teenager, it, it probably was Stevie Ray Vaughan. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, as a guitar player. Um, I remember just listening to it and playing along with it a lot. So, yeah, it's all full circle, I suppose, right now, which is cool, you know? What is it about Stevie Ray Vaughan that stuck out to you? What, what was it that... Same thing that still does. I mean, we were at rehearsal the other day, and I just, like, I watched a bunch of videos the night prior kind of getting into the method actor of things and yeah it's just his intensity it's his intensity of simplicity which is crazy yeah it's crazy there's that and the fact that you also dress very similarly to which Steve Ray Vaughan so super there's, accidental there's <laughs> really no like wardrobe yeah, change no, or you know like right. uh, augmentation or anything that's just like well yeah. no kimonos though I don't think <sighs> no what yeah. Yeah. why wouldn't you well as I get older I'm more comfortable Oh, he did kimonos? Silk kimonos. Yeah, he did. He did. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes, he yeah, did. he did. Sick kimonos. Wow. Yeah. So, I, so, I feel like you should be doing that now. Like, I was going to say, so why not? I mean, yeah, I would love to rock a kimono on stage. I mean, I'm thinking, like, maximum comfort. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, you wore pants. I mean, because like, you have us wearing these, like, <laughs> like really pants. tight jeans <laughs> in the band. Like, you know, there, there's actually a dress code to play with Dustin, actually. A lot of it's people don't realize true, this. <laughs> Literally, everything I have on right now was either gifted to me or hand me down from Dustin, okay? So, no, no, that's well, not this year. He would never he would never wear plaid, okay? I didn't buy those boots. He's going not good with all this. Yeah, but. You, you were a big proponent of it, though. <laughs> uh, so. God forbid you don't look like a douche on stage. Well, I don't think anybody wants to. That's, that's given. But if they say, you know, going from, like, you know, these nut huggers that you have us wearing to, 
the kimono. kimono. That, yeah, that would be nice. So maybe that's going to be a thing for the next. So where, cycle. where can we procure yeah. a kimono locally yeah. between now and Saturday? Locally, we're not going to do it. That's too anybody bad. out there looking for Kimonos, kimonos yeah. That's right. Yeah, there you go. Yes. Donation. Send them <laughs> kimono <laughs> donations. I mean, I feel like people will come to see you just based on like that, that could be our gimmick. Right. That's your thing. My like with pants or without pants. Surprise. I think I mean, people yeah. would assume without pants. Yes. I mean, I would like to she think that a kimono, good. you get a certain amount of like poetic license with how to actually she, execute that. It's so. a surprise. You started out with pants. Depending on how that night goes, you, yeah. know, like, mm-hmm. you, know. you, you know, pull Lenny Kravitz and, you know, <laughs> let pops him out, out accidentally. And, uh, you know. <laughs> Lenny's my man, though. It <laughs> happens. And, and you know what? Hey. I would actually probably be on time to more gigs, actually, because you know how I don't believe that. Put these on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> This is like this is like a twenty five minute process putting these pants Maybe it was on. It's your fault. Yeah. You're late. Yeah, yeah. Your hair. I said I was looking. Pants. I said I was looking for a parking spot on like, square. Tommy's, Tommy's like, like, I don't know. I was here, man. Like, <laughs> really, I was yeah. in the back alley trying to switch, go from my work pants to these things. Come on, Flurry. So yeah, blues. It's great. Yeah, <laughs> love playing it. So. You know, it's it's uh, you know everyone likes to say it's all about the music, but it's also about the presentation too. I would think. You know, I think that's a, that's a big part of what makes rock music iconic in a lot of ways. I just think it's honesty more mm. than anything. If you if you don't believe in what you're doing, people are gonna sniff that out, and, exactly. and that's the only reason we are doing this Stevie Ray Vaughan thing because it, it feels very comfortable to us to play yeah. this music. They were a three piece, we're a three piece, and it works. You know. Yeah, and well, it's our feel. It's 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 what we do, and I love playing shuffles and the blues, and just it it just works. It works, definitely works for me. Yeah, it does work for you. <laughs> <laughs> As does everything. <laughs> I think one thing that sticks out with, uh, you know, just as just as a music fan in general is, you know, if I go to a show, you know, I like to see a little bit of bravado, a little bit of, you know, okay, it's, you know, do a, do a great guitar solo, that kind of thing. With with blues, it feels like there's more soul or emotion behind so. that kind of stuff, so. as opposed to, you know, like a technical sort of sort of aspect sure. where you're almost showing off and. You know, kind of, you know, jerking it in front of the audience as opposed right. to actually, you know, uh, can you speak to that at all in terms of pouring emotion into what you're doing? I, I just, I've always been about simplicity when it comes to, to writing music and the covers that we play. And, you know, fast forward to the Stevie stuff. I mean, Stevie did a lot with a little, you mm. know, he's not playing a crazy amount of notes, but he hits one note and it's bone shattering. Just, yeah, it's crazy. Is there questions? Are you looking at something? <laughs> yeah, there's there's a live stream. We're actually we should we should get some questions. What are you people Hello, doing? Come on, you're hanging there. out with us. Join in. You don't, ah, there we go. There's a couple. Why does Dustin's hair look so goofy? It's <laughs> <laughs> not true. <laughs> Ronnie Rob, made up Rob Brown? No, nobody said that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew that was a made up one. <laughs> Come on. Did Amber send that one? <laughs> that was Rob Brown, actually. Uh, Rob, he's, yeah, Rob he's watching, though. <laughs> Is he? Yeah. <laughs> cool, cool. What up, Rob? Uh, Michael Shinko says, uh, the bass player is quite a tall drink of water. I hear he puts out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, just, right. questions. We literally just yeah. saw him five minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I do. To myself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I'm very happily married. Shinko. But I wouldn't make an exception for Mr. Shinko. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but this kind of stuff obviously doesn't happen overnight. How long does it take to be able to reproduce these songs in a way that you feel is authentic uh, to, to what you know Steve Ray did on stage? The most important part for me in, in covering someone else's music is to be comfortable with it where you don't have to think about it. Mm. So, um, you know, we rehearse, you know, we rehearse and... But we all live, we, we live with it for a very long time, you know. I like to go in, I like to watch, um, watch live performances that he has done and look at set lists that he's done, you know. Um, yeah, you know, I, I think the thing too is like, you know, we're calling it a retrospective. Mm-hmm. So it's not a purely a tribute act where we're trying to emulate 
every little detail of a live performance or the music <laughs> or a song yeah. or everything. You know, you still have to do it in your own way. Yeah. Sort of say, you know, where you're paying tribute to, yes, this great band, this great guitarist. But at the same time, you're adding your own flavor to it where, you know, just, you know, a, a small portion of it you can call your own from a you know, performance standpoint. Yeah. So I think that's, you know, the, the distinction we try to do between a, a tribute show and then like a retrospective or whatever you want to call it. Mm. Absolutely. Because really there's no way to play Stevie Ray Vaughan. Not even close. Sure. He didn't play it perfect. So we're yeah. taking our spin on it and... Yeah. It'd be Get different out. if we were doing like a rush cover, like right. a rush it's retrospective just, or something. It's up, yeah. Which is not off the table, but uh, it's off. The table. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't kid, don't kid yourself, Dan. You can't do that. You can't do that. <laughs> He's singing it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tommy's like, I'm in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, first song. Here we go. Tommy's like, I've been, wait, I've been waiting 17 years to take that kid out of the basement. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God, wrap around here. I can bring all my toms. That's now. the most toms I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> it does. It's like I work in a music store. We don't have that many toms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <you do. laughs> and how did this kind of happen? Like, you don't just like walk in the Kirby and say, yo, we're going to play here. Uh, we're going to do this on Saturday night. And they say, okay. No, I mean, we did, we did our first one um, at the River Street Jazz Cafe. And it was a success. And we had a great time doing it. And um, I actually... I actually like fought off the idea for a while, you know what I mean? I didn't, uh, and then I finally was like, all right, let's give this a try. Excuse me. And then, uh, yeah, we did that show and then we were fortunate enough to do it at BB Kings in New York city as well, which was cool. And I mean, like this literally is only the third time we've done mm -hmm. it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so it's just, fortunately I just feel again more comfortable like just this time around you know first time doing anything is you know nerve-wracking but this time i definitely feel a little comfortable we switched up the set list you know a couple we like to keep it fresh you know it's a great catalog to choose from and, and again i was like looking at old set lists trying to see what he would do and how he put it together you know it's fun it's fun doing the research and it's fun it's we're just trying to tip our hats to to what they did that's it, you know? And again, we never wanted to just do this, you know, our original music is the most important thing to us, you know. But doing this every once in a while, every you know, a couple times a year, it's it's fun. You know? Now you, you guys play a lot locally. What was it like to play at uh BB Kings? Was that uh was it a different vibe, different different kind uh, of crowd? I mean we've all you know, all three of us in separate bands have played, you know a lot of great rooms, you know, but that's definitely an iconic room and it was yeah. it was it was great to be on the same stage as so many legends, you know, especially in the blues world. And, you know, for a place that's named after one of the best, you know. Yeah. So there was a moment I was yeah. like by myself, you know. I'm like, shit, this is cool. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. So How about you? Yeah, how about, how about you? me? What? How about you, man? How about you? <laughs> what do you have to say, man? Yeah. <laughs> what was it like playing at BB Kings? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, like we got Dustin's take on it, but oh yeah, no, I mean it, it, it's great. I mean it's 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 one of those it's... things where like hell, you know, three, four, five years ago, I never thought I would have been playing at BB Kings in New York City, and here we now, you know, here we are now doing it, and it's you know every every room you play is different. I mean whether it's and, you know, they all have the pros and cons. And whether you're playing, you know, the corner of Johnny Chicken Wings, you know, on a Friday night or you're doing BB Kings, you know, in, in, in Midtown, it's, you know, they all bring a, a different thing to the table. And mm. uh, it's it's weird because BB Kings is a, you know, it's a true stage room mm. where, you know, all the lights are focused on you and the rest of the room, the rest of the room is black. Yeah. And so the, the first thing you notice when you walk out on a stage and... You know, you're like, okay, let's do this, guys. You strap on your guitar and you tune up and everything. You look out and you don't see anything. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just it's pitch black. It's but you feel the people they want to go there. They right. want to hear music. Right. So there's They're that. They're not going. It's not the corner bar atmosphere. Mm. They want to hear the music and they love it. And we love that. And it, that feedback thing is. Yeah. That's it. That's right. It. So we you, get it from them. We give it. And it's just it's awesome. We get it and we give it. That's quote Tommy Smallfield. Yeah, 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 that was awesome. I'm a simple guy. Thank you, Tommy. I'm over here stumbling over my words. I was like, man, 
drummers are simple. We get it, you know? and we give it, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's it. <laughs> But to Tommy's point, though, like I said, like you get that like very like small amount of like anxiousness right before you hit your first notes, and then mm. once you finish your first song, and it's just like this eruption of, you know, clapping and people, you know, howling at you. You're just like, oh my gosh, like this is like, you know, it's like the best natural drug ever. So yeah. So there's my two cents on people. Thank you. There you go. Yeah. Are you happy? Thank with, you are you sharing, satisfied man. with that? <laughs> I appreciate you sharing your story with us. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll get to do one on your radio show one of these days. Uh. Yeah, I mean, you know, you guys like oh, yeah. <laughs> Probably not, but yeah. You know. <laughs> we, we, we've already determined the theme of this whole uh, podcast yeah. oh, episode, man. so Pop obviously. Goes, it's called Pop You got you, 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 you to yeah. loop around every now and then and yeah. come back to that. Pop goes, man. Pop goes, <laughs> fine. So, uh, you know, you, you mentioned your original music. I obviously want, we want to talk about that. The latest Absolutely. album is is Blues One. Yeah, and that's actually... <laughs> um, there's a one... Oh, man, I just had to turn the sound off on this. <laughs> I'm terrible at this. Um, that operating your phone. Yeah. Yeah. Dustin, terrible. send your music to alt natives at all Fuck you. I did! Dustin, turn your sound down. I'm out of here. Fuck you! <laughs> You're going to get an email tomorrow, subject line, fuck you. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> I hope so. But um, what was the question? Where are we at? We're talking about Blues One. Yeah, Blues but one. that was cool because, I mean, that was that was a collection. It, we just wanted to put something out while we were working on stuff for the next original one. Mm -hmm. So um, so we did. we picked like four classic blues covers that we really wanted to do. And we put one new original song. And uh, which will be played on alt natives, um, if I allow it now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's, you know, it, we put it out. We're really happy with the way it sounds, and so that's cool. And we're working on our next, you know, full length original one, which will be out in, I'd say, you know, spring two thousand eighteen. Were you guys recording that? It's up to it's up <laughs> in the air. Oh, okay. So yeah, there's yeah, no. Still, we haven't. Yeah. So we haven't. You know, we've been pre-proing everything at our own studio. So, um, we had a lot to choose from. Yeah, I think. What what are, what's our demo count up to? Like 55, 50, 56 50, tracks, I think. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. There's we have the, the, lots of material. There's lots of stuff to sift sift through. So. How, and how do you do that? Like, how do you like go from fifty five to ten or? Mm -hmm. um, we're well, not sure. Good we're question. To that out, actually. <laughs> this, this time, yeah, we'll let you know. Very good question. We'll let you know. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. We're going to see how that works out. Uh, There's definitely ones that always stand out. You know, um, this time around, I organized everything, and I put it on some discs, and I gave everybody discs, and Matt's new car doesn't have a CD player. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm listening to my demos off a thumb drive in my car. <laughs> so it's, 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 yeah, that's sign of the times. Order. It's like, that's cool, but, oh, man. Um, but, what yeah, is, we're getting down to, the, you know, you sift through it. It's it's crazy. It's like you do have to, every record cycle, you become an archivist mm. of your own stuff, and you're going back on your own iPhone. Like, yeah. I never trade in a phone <laughs> because I have stuff like voice memos on it. So literally I never get the extra money for a new iPhone because I won't trade it in. So I go back to like my old phones and listen to. You know you can transfer those to like I say. Uh... No, the voice memos you can't. If anybody knows how to do that, that'd be awesome. <laughs> so you can't? Uh, voice memos. I feel like you'd have to be able to. I mean, I could do it on my droid. <laughs> oh, Aaron Brooks said something. Ask Dustin what vintage gear really means. <laughs> in, in quotes. Aaron yeah. Brook, um, a, you know, one of our great friends, said, uh, I've had a few amps blow up while me and Aaron were playing together. <laughs> and he said that vintage gear means broken. <laughs> <laughs> um, Is he hosting this or are we? Uh, I don't know. You guys are slacking. Yeah, he's, he's, he's on top of those comments. Yeah, so. man. Yeah, my battery will die within seven seconds. <laughs> there was a comment. How about, about, a, how about a beer? Oh, what are we doing? Are we trying something else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah my something else going. How about the Atwater Brewing Nitro Vanilla Java Porter? Mm. Java pour me up. That, that'll wake you up. Pass me down. To the right. To the right. This is Matt. It's a Paco. You obviously have these like pours down perfectly for. Uh, 
So, uh, Jody, to answer your Tasty, question, yeah. uh, we are drinking uh, porters and stouts Jody. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so, so take Jody, it is, dude. It is not. Did Jody Bush say something. Yeah. It is not whiskey. What did he say? Yeah, it's not Jim Beam, Jody. Sorry to. Uh, sorry to disappoint. Yeah, it's not Jim Beam. Jim he did Beam. ask about Tommy taking a drum solo on Saturday, and something about Latin Express. <laughs> oh, Latin <laughs> like Express. Like something on his album, yes. like Latin. Express. Well, actually, Latin Express is part of uh, Santana. Because ah, I so did a, a piece him. that was more with that Latin kind of feel, and we mm. called it Latin Express. It was on my a drum CD that I never completed, but that's done. It's done. So it's I done. I, I, I titled it Latin Express. I like it. <laughs> yeah, Latin. it's really a Brazilian groove, but nobody knows the difference. <laughs> <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a Brazilian yeah. groove. Whatever. Said no one ever. <laughs> no one ever said. <laughs> that's not Latin. <laughs> it's Brazilian. Yeah. yeah. That's, oh, that's a keeper. Remember that. I, well, I was gonna say, I mean, Latin Express. I mean, that could be, you know, Tommy's drum album, or like, you know, Yo, Rob Brown, a, 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 a brothel down in South America. Seriously. So, you know, <laughs> Yo, what's Rob Brown know about Latin Express? You know. <laughs> This is funny. <laughs> Land Express. All right. So, uh, well, let's go. Let's go back to the the previous album then. Uh, yes. Let's talk about uh, you Ooh. know your original material. Uh, A lot of know, work what, there. What, what what inspired those those songs? And uh, you know, are, have they uh, you know as they've aged, do they gain different meaning? Do you play them differently now uh, than you did when you first? Uh, I mean, they're uh, for me. They're definitely like a second. They're definitely, yeah, I mean, it's like a limb now, you know, we just play the, you know, there's nothing. Right. Welcome back. <laughs> uh, yeah, back. I mean, the stuff is just really, it's really. We put a lot of work in that record. Yeah. A lot of work. We're really yeah. proud of that really, record. Really, really, uh... yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I mean, I love all those tunes pretty much the same. And some of them we worked on for weeks. And it was our first together. Yeah, it's our first album together. Right, that so was the Electric Gentleman's we, uh, first record. We had that drive to, okay, we're going to do this, all this stuff. And I think we were still figuring out what we were. You yeah. Know? I think every record yeah. you figure out what you are, but. Mm. Yeah, at the same time, though, like, you know, some of those tracks are too, like, we wrote on the spot in the studio. I mean, the, the one so track, we, Baby Girl, two in the, the actual recording on two. it. Is the first take one? we've ever did. Or definitely one. A lot of times, that's always yeah. the best one. It seems. I mean, we were just messing around, and just, we just came up with this idea, and within a couple minutes, we got a form down, and we recorded the first take, and that was the first time we ever actually played the tune all the way through, yeah. and that was on the album. <laughs> so that was it. I forgot that. Yeah. I'm always intrigued by. There's some bands that won't do any demos, and they just go in, and they. I think it's nice if you don't have to worry about a budget. Or you know time, sure. um, you know we always kind of go in pretty, pretty well rehearsed, mm. you know, which is that's kind of the way that we do it. But you know that just kind of you're you're gonna rehearse the record either after or before, so you know we do both. But so, no click tracks and just yeah, doing no our thing. Yeah, it was done live. We, we didn't do it we live. Do we, do, separate, we just do it. We don't you know tracking or anything like that. It was uh, look at putting pieces on top of pieces and all that. But it, it is play like a band. It yeah. is curious that you asked about if we still play the songs the same way. Yeah. Because I mean, like like any artist or musician, I mean, stuff evolves. Right. So I look exactly. Ba I look back. I look, you know I listen to the album sometimes. And I listen to a bass song. I'm like, man, like, I wish I did it. I, I hate how I played on the album. How yeah. I love how I do it now. Right. Or I look back. I'm like, I'm like, how did I even do that? Like I can't. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out my own bass line. I can't even figure out my own bass line. So it's exactly how I feel. It, go, it, it goes both ways. So tracks. like. Sometimes you like you create magic on the spot that you have a hard time replicating again, and sometimes again you just you know through the nature of playing a song over and over again out live over weeks, months, years, and you just you know you come up with the different nuances that you you know could have, should have, would have, but obviously it is what it is. So yeah, yeah. Matt's the king of Matt's the ki Matt's best bass playing is the, the demos. Like you just listen back to it and you're like so we try to. <laughs> we try to get them on the demos. You know? <laughs> um, Matt, go back to the demos. <laughs> but that's something to be said with how we're what we're learning to do. I, I think we kind of are not beating things to death in the demo stage, rather letting them happen mm. in the studio when we do record. Of course, there'll be a structure, but it'll be a skeleton. You know, it's kind of where we're at mm -hmm. today. I'll let me know. Ask me tomorrow; it'll be different. <laughs> 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 we have an interesting question. Do we? Uh, Who is it from? <clears throat> 
Uh, the owner of some bar in Scranton. I won't. I won't even give him the press. You know. <laughs> uh, I think we know what we're talking about. <laughs> we don't have to see. My man V. How yeah. many How many tubes of toothpaste do you go through per week? <laughs> Followed by, and how many more teeth do you have than the average adult man? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Vinny. The answer is actually uh, seven for both Vinny. of those questions. Actually. I mean, I never honestly <laughs> said to myself, "How many teeth do I have?" I don't even know how many teeth. How many teeth do you have? <laughs> you have exactly. Vinny, how many teeth do you have? How many teeth do you have? How many? Uh, what's just, the average? I'm just glad I have some. I mean, I've met few people that don't have many teeth. Wow. Well. So I have more than that. They walk outside. Yeah. They, 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 they certainly more than have you. more than the average, obviously. <laughs> uh, toothpaste. Um, I don't I don't brush my teeth. <laughs> I haven't brushed my teeth in you years. You shower. <laughs> you just paint them more. No, no. He just wipes <laughs> them, actually. Just get just like, oh. I just paint them. Yeah. Paint them every morning and, you know, high gloss. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> bah. He says. My eye teeth are tight. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. There's no music questions. Uh, yeah, no. Yes, yeah, they, right. all, they all want to know Tooth about paste. your yeah, yeah. Wait. Something's going to so. come out with Matt. With, like, you know, what he, what's he doing with uh, <laughs> Johnny <laughs> Soccer? And, oh, this is funny. I have a, I have a question. I mean, obviously, yes. you guys have played in bands prior to what you're doing now. Mm-hmm. You with, were you with Miz? Yeah. Prior to this? Yeah. You have played with... I don't know how many people. I don't even know where the fuck you came from. <laughs> <laughs> Todd has played in way more well, bands than yeah, you know, most, most people New York combined. York Times band yeah. wedding band. Yeah, I played yeah. with Strawberry Jam. Okay. Little friends mm. of mine. I lots of bands through all. So I probably saw you. From the years. Oh, you definitely have. Many, many years. many probably drunk years. when I all saw different you. All different bands. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you've yeah. been going lots to bars over the past 15 years in the Valley, the, yeah. yeah, you probably saw Yeah. Tommy. 20, 30 years. How long have you been playing out, Tommy? Johnny, like, introduced us. Uh, like My first gig was back Lemon Jelly back in the day. Wow. Yeah, Lemon yeah, Jelly. Dude, was, oh man, so yeah, dude, Johnny was still man. I played everywhere in the 90s. I went to New York City for a couple of years and worked guitar player from Van Morrison. Came back and worked in local bands. Got on the road with Strawberry Jam for like a year and a half. And Wedding band, I played with New York Times band. And just, I'll just keep moving on. Sure. The next thing. And I met Dustin, I don't know when, seven years ago or something like that. And this guy's pretty good. <laughs> Thanks. I want to hang out with him. <laughs> so, uh, so Tommy said his first live show or gig was 1983, which happens to be the Ooh. year I was born. I was so. born as well. So, well, I, not, 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 to date, not, not to date you, man. <laughs> it's just to you know illustrate the caliber of experience that we have sure. going on. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. It really doesn't mean anything. And it, it shows. It shows. These guys have so much experience. It doesn't mean that. We work very well together. And we're best friends, and it makes life a lot fucking easier. It's, it's as simple as that, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. And eventually, nothing to do with being playing more gigs or anything. Yeah. Nothing at all. We're just. No. And how old were you in Lemon Jelly? Because that was. Um, well, six. I, I met you. I was. 20, <laughs> I was. I was twenty-one. So you. Yeah, I was under. 17, I mean, 18? Oh, absolutely. I mean, think, I think when we were like hanging out, I was. Sorry to all the bar owners out there. I was not 21. <laughs> We've all, well, I've been there. I mean, it's, long, it's been past now. We're yeah. all over that. It's yeah, man. Shit. 17, 18. Because, yeah. like, Jamie and Davey were, like, Davey was just, like, 20. Yeah. So, um, yeah, me and me and Pop go, have got, we go way back. Yeah. Cool. So, I, I'm not ragging on Dustin. Like, it's, it, we go Yeah, we're, back. like, busting. Yeah. That's cool. We're busting balls, yeah. boys. I, I kind of felt like I was, like, um, if, if we didn't, if people didn't know that, our history. They might yeah, be, oh, he's, man. He's being a real dickhead to dust. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, he is, and he is a dickhead. <laughs> but I mean, it's, we've just grown it's to a, it. It's we've a all hair, grown to accept it. It's a hair jealousy <laughs> thing. Yeah. Let's oh. go ahead of hair. It's, it's out of control. It's like the freaking seventh wonder of the world. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. You used to have a hairline that went straight across like that. <laughs> That's yeah. not, no, you didn't. That's I not did. true at all. That's I bullshit. Did. I definitely did. I'll show you a picture. <laughs> I don't remember that at all. You know, speaking of uh, Lemon Jelly, yeah. how did that, now, you, did you want to establish something new with this band, or did, did that kind of naturally evolve into what you're doing now, or, you know? Everything what, has kind mm-hmm. of naturally evolved. I, I mean, there was, a, there was a time when I was trying to fight being uh, a three-piece guitar oriented band that was when mm. I wanted you know try to do something new probably exiting the Badleys you know when 
I tried to, you know, the solo record was a little bit more pop oriented, like pop rock stuff. Mm -hmm. and, but then it's just like, man, I just, why am I trying to be somebody that I'm, I'm not? And this is what I am, you know? Um, and that's what I was in Love and Jelly because I wasn't thinking about being anything at the time. You know, I was just playing music with my buddies and writing some songs. So you just got to be who you're going to be. Uh, and stop, you know, not try to try to be anything. And that's what I'm doing right now. You know? My phone died, so, well, it was about to die, so you're going to have to get me on the questions. Oh, there's, there, there's, a, there's a few here, let's see. Uh... Adam says, uh, looking good, guys. Now, Dustin, get off your phone. Adam, <laughs> Which Adam, he, he has to now. Adam, yeah, now I have uh, to. Adam Nolan. Oh. Yeah. Well, let's see. Adam Nolan contacted me. <laughs> saying, About hey, what? It's a cool show you're doing. Say it again. Let's see what happens. He oh. said, it's a cool show you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be part of it. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Wait, this one or the other one? The other one. Oh, okay. Uh, Johnny, you if you want... ever want me to come on and do like 45 minutes of like nominal bass solos and talk about, <laughs> you know, that type of stuff, hey. Yeah, please do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do that. For us, we can do it. It's Saturdays at 9 o'clock. We can't, that we can't fucking up. I can't wait to hear <laughs> I, Speaking of Adam, I can't wait to hear his new stuff. It'll yeah. Be, I, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. I know um, uh, my boy, my boy Nike played violin on it today. So got No that. shit. Didn't yeah. he do uh, Panacea stuff too? Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. He's been doing some stuff for us, man. He's oh, like, very cool. He's our boy. That Don't song worry. Additive by Panacea was like... Yo, Panacea. Made my skin like just... <laughs> Those days. Yeah. Paul. Big Paul. Our buddy. Our man. boy. Our boy. Definitely Absolutely. Boy. He's probably in bed. He's not watching. <laughs> He's watching. What Eagles, time is it? Eagles tribute or something. Now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Probably watching Hell Freezes Over yeah. for yeah. the twelfth <laughs> time. <laughs> yeah. Really? He's a huge Eagles fan. Oh Eagles god. Fan. Yeah. It, so that does bring I mean, up uh, you know that era of music uh, versus this era of music. Uh, how, how do you feel the music scene has changed over the years uh, in uh, locally? I want your answer. Hmm. I mean, I just think there's less we'll places go around to the play. Board in this one. That's yeah. a big part of it. Less places to play. I, I, but is, I've, is there though? There definitely is. Um, well, there might be less big stages to play. Sure. Band mm -hmm. yes. for a full band. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Just well, loud band show. There, there aren't many V spots with a, a no. full stage. I mean, you're not going to get nightcaps anymore, or right. the back room at Bruce Brothers, or. Tinks, you know, stuff right. like that. Mm -hmm. But as far as the quality, I think it's gotten better. It really has. There is a very high, I agree. high level of musicianship. And <clears throat> from doing the show on, on Altman 2-1, just the, hearing these these bands are just... Sure. The quality is, is up there. And it's like, how have these guys not been featured more? And I think it's because of the lack of places to play. Mm. And one thing I've also yeah. noticed is... I think the bands are each other's biggest fans, as opposed to go, you know, rewind back to like 06, 07. It was kind of cutthroat. Sure. That's like, if you played in a cover band, it was like, oh, these guys are a fucking cover band. Get the fuck out yeah. of here. He'll vouch <laughs> even before. No. That's what I always say. It was yeah. like, back, you know, in the heyday, they was like, you play one band, you do one thing. Yeah. You mm -hmm. couldn't even fill in with somebody else. To, it was just like, you don't do that. That was... that. That was anything, was, though. That could have been, like, your full-time job. Of, there was <laughs> lots of clubs, lots of bands, yeah. and people came out. So it was a different time. That's yeah. all it was. Yeah. But to, I really have to say today, like, players like these guys, yeah, it, it's, you know, younger players, it's just better. It's just, they're, definitely, uh, the playing is definitely better. Yeah. It's just. What do you think? What do I think? Yeah, absolutely. How the scene has changed or progressed over the years. I mean, I, I, I'll always be the first to say it. I mean, this area, northeastern Pennsylvania, has, I mean, just monster players in it. Exactly. I mean, it, it, you, you know, it's it's insane. You know, when you go with their... Every genre, dude. Every, and, and that's the thing. It's not just a rock scene here. It's not just a jazz scene or a blues scene or, uh, you know, an alt-rock scene. I mean, the variety that we have here in northeastern Pennsylvania of good, you know... You know, good representations of that genre mm. is insane. I mean, I, I always tell people, you have to search it out. You're not going to trip over it like you would in New York City or mm. Nashville or other major you know music cities. But 
if you search it out, you can find a good, you know, caliber band in just about any any genre you want to want to see. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the positive thing, and I mean, the negative thing. And I mean, Tommy, you and I talk about this like all the time when we're going to gigs about, I mean, the the the, the dynamics of the local uh, music industry, and I think it really applies to, you know, most towns and cities in America. Is it's a it's like a psychological thing with with attendees or people that go out on a Friday or Saturday night. They don't want to pay a cover, right? Okay, yes. it doesn't matter if it's a three, you know, three, Funny. five, <laughs> ten dollars, yeah, whatever. whatever. Bucks, it could be yeah. a one dollar cover, <laughs> and people will walk away at the door, yeah. but then go put, you know, go to the next bar down the road, not pay a cover, and then put ten dollars into the Touch Tunes, mm. you know, jukebox, and for ten That's songs. We just talked about. That. I have yeah. seen yeah. people. Yeah, all I've seen walk <laughs> away from a dollar cover. <laughs> I know. Austin Nunes's. Dollar cover on the door, and there's obviously you could see everything that's going on outside in Sinus's. Yeah. But they walked away. You know, and that's wild to me. I blame Hardware Bar. That's wild. <laughs> yeah, but no, yeah, yeah, it was around the, the same time. They were the, 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 the uh, I mean, it's been happening everywhere, but they were kind of like the trendsetters here in this market, like no cover. Yeah. Like, come yeah. in, drink your face off, right. the band's here. You don't care about that. We're going to charge you more for a beer, but uh, yeah. you get it for free. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, that's the thing. You know, that's... Uh, it's the, the psychological part. It is, right. man. Right. That's really right. much. It, 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 yeah. and, it, and Very the, much. The first time I stumbled upon that, like, convention or concept was I was playing in New York City this many years ago, and we were talking about this with a bar owner or, a, you know, a talent buyer, and I'm like, yeah, it's the same thing in New York City. Like, it's like a psychological thing. People don't want to pay a cover for whatever reason, you know. At the end of the night, it might be the same amount they're spending. Yeah. But again, it's this thing. And he said, a lot of bars in New York City actually will, when they have live music, they just check up the prices by ten percent, say. Mm, right. And that's just basically how you have to do it. I mean, so it's <laughs> pay the band out of that. And pay the band off, you know, off, off the bar ring instead of, <laughs> you know, Jeez. instead of off a cover charge. So. Whatever, I'm sure there's some psychologist out there that's yeah. you know doing their like PhD dis- dissertation on this or whatever, and you know we'll yeah. fi- we'll find the solution maybe, and you know you know sometime later down the road. But I, I would say that's you know like I said, there's there, there's the great thing about this area, or the local music scene in general, with the quality, the variety, the number of people, uh, like you guys said, that the sense of community that you have. Mm-hmm. There's this all all in it together type of thing where. You know, we'll play shows with other bands, or we'll collaborate, or we'll, we'll do whatever. You know, like I said, we're not competing against each other by, by any means. But then there's the flip side to it, where it's just like trying to get people just to just to pay for artistic content, right? You know, at, at face value, is, <laughs> is, is, is it can be frustrating sometimes. So, I think but. the positive thing about it is that it weeded out the bullshit. Like the people that are doing it are the people that want to do it. Yeah, good point. That's true. Yeah, very, That's very true. You no, know, yeah. I really do. Yeah. I think it weeded out bullshit because hmm. well, you, you have to. You got to be out of your goddamn mind. Want to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst business to be involved in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to make money, <laughs> right? But I'm sure you've seen it. We like, do it because we do it. Yeah, man. You, I, you, my whole family plays music, and same with Matt, and 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 du- all of our all families. Of our families. Yeah, all our families. We do it because we do it. Every one I mean, of our siblings are in a band. Nobody starts playing an instrument going, that's crazy. Well, I'm going to be rich. <laughs> going to be rich. Yeah. We, we love it. No, but what I'm saying, like, you've probably seen the, a different scene than these guys have seen. Sure. And, and, like, in that, you know, the money aspect of it. Where you could say, all right, well, Actually, we, this, this, yes. this yes. band charges this much money per night. Okay, yes. fine, no big deal. I've seen it in sales. I've been in sales for yes. 12 years. And back in the day, you said... It costs as much for a full page in, in the, the print. There's cash. There you go. Yeah. Now it's right. like, how much? Can I pay you half now? Or like, it's it's yeah. it's a different game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's trickled it's a to whole everything. Game, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it's trickled to to arena level, to stadium level, to anything. Oh yeah, everything. I mean, uh, package. You know, package concerts. Man, you see two bands that would have easily have sold out the same venue that they're playing together. Sure. But it just doesn't happen anymore. Package mm-hmm. shows are crazy, man. You know, you see two bands in an amphitheater, you know, that would have headlined, you know. I so mean, it's just where it's at musically, man. And that's, the, the bottom line is, like, the people that are going to do it are going to do it because they want to, man. And we and love that's it. That's probably it's why the quality is better. Like you said, they yeah, kind of man. out the... The music in this area is awesome, yeah. man. There's so many cool bands. So many great players. So many great players, man. Refills? 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 Are we trying something different? We yes, are. we are. Of course. The, 
the, the, the nitro was interesting. Is you could definitely I like that taste, nitro. taste the what nitro in it. Uh, you know the the Java yeah, part cool. of it. I mean, definitely. I don't know who this is, but there you go. I'm not gonna... Oh no, who's sick? And that's Matt. <laughs> I, I know that's oh, Matt. That is, yeah. yeah. Put a red. <laughs> put a red. <laughs> put a red mark on it. Yeah, yeah, so sorry. put a Mr. Young sticker yeah. on my cup. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, this is the um, the Blockhouse Brewing Double Chocolate Bock. Oh, mm. it yeah. smells great. Yeah. Uh, Brad Basic says a good door person can make or break a person walking in the door paying a cover. Oh yeah, that's that's a, that's, that's a part of it too. That is true. That's very you're, true. You're, you're a sales guy at that point. I, I I used to work the door at the Jazz Cafe mm -hmm. for uh, for a period of time, and yeah, you are a sales guy. Yeah, Brad's right. Brad's totally right. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they scoff at five yeah, bucks, be like, yeah, it's five bucks for Yeah, you've we've talked three we bands. Talked about that. Yeah, five bands. Back in the early nineties, yeah, I remember was... running the door for my own band because we didn't we couldn't afford to have somebody. So <laughs> we would do that and then go play. Well, you heard that here, folks. Because that's the first <laughs> time I heard that one. So tell me was <laughs> Yeah, Tommy was door, doorman and drummer and his same at the so same nasty. gig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tommy's so nasty. At the same time. Yeah, she actually set the drums up at the door. They actually mic'd them and ran for the main actually. Seriously. Well, if anybody can do it, Tommy is the. <laughs> Shut the drums. Get the so door. Drums. Okay. But no, that, I mean that's. I mean Brad puts. I mean that, that is a good point. I mean it's it's you know if, if if they're just acting like a cashier, just taking money and that's that. I mean that's one thing. But I know many times where I persuaded people to pay the five, ten, fifty bucks to come and check right. it out. You know, some of them never even heard of the band, and they were just coming for dinner or drinks and didn't realize that band was even playing. Yeah. And so. So you I almost mean, have to talk them into also like, hey, it's but, worth it, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's all over you there. Get, you get excited boot, about it. I would, you know, sometimes like mm -hmm. dress mm -hmm. quirky or whatever, Which and you yeah. know, try to put yeah. on a critter. One time, I had my cat there with me at the, you know, like, you know, uh, the, I had this little kitten that I just rescued on underneath my front porch that I had at the uh, door with me. But yo, if this band wasn't great. Would I bring my kitten to it? You know, like <laughs> you know, I can't say no to that. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know, so the yeah, others. But yes, the statement is very true, and, and and that can, I mean, I'd say in some nights that probably equated to probably sometimes upwards to ten to twenty percent of mm -hmm. their of the overall take of the door of just you know talking people into coming in. So, Joe Stepino, man, what's up? What's going on? I haven't seen Joe in forever. Chris Fetchko, what's going on? Yeah, he's he said. Uh, Chris says, uh, "How many uh, wardrobe changes have you made since the interview began?" <laughs> <laughs> What is going on? <laughs> yeah, what yeah, is yeah. this? They are my, dressed now right now. What yeah, is this? Good. My roast? People are. I know. It's like it's roast. I love shit, it. Man. They, Imagine if it was. How bad it would be? <laughs> well, we got to do that. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll do that one yeah. day. We should do that. We'll one do that, one, that one day. Dustin Rose. I can take that, man. Oh, I know you can. <laughs> you take more than that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> better be. <laughs> And uh, you know, Vinny said uh, that he paid a, a three dollar cover to see bands in 1988 and a dollar fifty for a bottle of beer. Not much has changed in 20 years, and yet people still don't want to pay. That's that's also true. I think it's definitely the one job. Where don't not... brag about your prices. <laughs> yeah, what is it? Oh man, uh, this is your forum for advertising. It, Aaron Brooks is those uh, transition lenses that you're rocking over. There. <laughs> ah, <laughs> They're actually yes. 3D, man. I just like I figured I'd just live life in 3D. Yeah. He actually just saw. He just saw the movie in 3D. Actually, yeah, 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 yeah. Legos 3D or whatever. Aaron, what a bastard! <laughs> He's all over this. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Aaron said he will pay the cover charge to roast you. Oh yeah, he was uh, ten bucks. So ten, that's what we got to do. We got to have a Dustin roast yeah, actually yeah, yeah, as, our, as our opening yeah. act uh, for, yes. uh, for shows. Now. He knows we're roasted. <laughs> Aaron, by the way, you are invited on the show anytime. So yeah. whenever you're not on the road or anything, let us know. And We'd it's love twenty to bucks. For you. Or if we want to do a roast, <laughs> Dustin. Although, uh, Dustin, yeah, yeah, roast. Gonna say, Although Dustin Dustin's might tune in and give you a taste of your own. Yeah, I'm just gonna show up. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right, somebody asked me. Ask Matt a question. Yeah, let's 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 move on. Yeah, what time we got there, Popco? Eight seventeen. <laughs> oh, beautiful! Oh, jeez. So, uh, in the time that you guys have uh, have played together and stuff, uh, w w what would you say are your highlights so far in terms of shows, in terms of uh, things that you? You feel proud of that you guys have done or accomplished? <laughs> be quiet. Oh, what the hell was that? Yeah. Well, we're trying to reflect you that first. <laughs> I'll tell you, the one thing I have to say is uh, Briggs Farm. Mm -hmm. 
some reason we come there and we get on that stage and we kill it. I don't know what it is. It's just the people. I think it's the people. They love the music. And you get up there and you, you're feeling the people. and it's, it's some of my best playing. I think I play the same thing every time or whatever, but it just the way I feel about it. I feel I the mean, people. that crowd is, I mean, that crowd's the, always You feel awesome. the people. And yeah. when you get the people, it just makes you play better. Or you just feel better. You give it, you get it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that, there it is. There it is. <laughs> the simple lines from a simple true. drummer. Yeah. Briggs is definitely. Bada boom. <laughs> <laughs> Bada ding. Bada boom. Briggs is definitely, um, yeah. you know, every year it's, it's cool it's because great. it's like bigger every year. Like, it's that's like mm. the one step where it's like, okay, are we did all the work that, you know, it's the same time every year, every, you know, um, it's a good gauge of what we did, you know what I mean? Yeah. So every year it just seems to be bigger, it's like, all right, cool. Well, it's, some, it's almost like a confirmation, because yeah. when, you're, when you're performing in front of an audience like that who are blues fans mm -hmm. at a, you know, one of the, the premier East Coast blues festivals, and, you know, so obviously it's, it's a festival, it's a party atmosphere, but, I mean, these are people that you know, have a specific thing. And when they're, you know, cheering you on and applauding and going nuts after every song, it's like, well, hey, we're doing something, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, and, and again, and this is, you know, this isn't, we're not doing covers, we're doing original music at this thing. Right. So, right. you know, we're, we're doing our style, our flavor of the blues, you know, slash power trio in front of people who hate to see that and are just ecstatic over it, you yeah. know? So it's... It gives you the, the little, the, uh, the warm and cozy feeling, you know, yeah. to a certain degree, I guess. I think, I mean, there's just been a, there's been a few shows. I mean, to, you know, to play the Kirby this Saturday is really cool. You know, mm, it's yeah. like a future highlight. Well, that's like a, you know, almost like a bucket list for any local musician. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, it, yeah, we've, we've all seen many shows there. Right. And, you know, um. It's a true honor, it really is. Yeah, it's, uh, it's cool. I mean, this is my hometown. I grew up here, so I mean, that, that was the place you saw shows, you know. Mm -hmm. So to be able to play it, um, yeah, we're going to have a great time. Hopefully, you know, we see a lot of people listening in there. And we're, it's going to be cool. Do you want to kind of give a details on that? Yeah, sure. I mean, Saturday we're night, we're going to do, uh, we're going to open up the show. We're going to do a little gen gentleman set. You know, so we're going to open for ourselves. Because, uh... Because we don't want to pay another band. <laughs> <laughs> no, we talk about that, that, that camaraderie locally. We're like, well, yeah, get out. Well, camaraderie. Yeah. Yeah. Who can open And the us? opening band for the show is good, man. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, they're great. <laughs> you're, you're, they're you got to love them. you got to love them. you got to love the opening band. They're good. They're good. They're really good. Doors at you gotta 7. got to check them out. Right? Doors mm -hmm. at 7. Show at 8. Tickets are on sale, you know, online. At the Kirby box office, um, and we're gonna have a blast. We can't wait. It's gonna be, yeah, man. It's you know, it's a holiday show. It's cool. We uh, hope to see y'all there. You know, absolutely. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Vinny asks, uh, Matt Bonham or uh, Karen Carpenter? Interesting. Interesting question. Bonham or Karen Carpenter? Can I answer that question? Yes. Yeah, totally. Tommy, take that. Um, I would say Karen Carpenter with uh, rudiments. Oh, Bottom nice. over feel. Mm. Yeah. Please, please respond Karen to Karen Carpenter that. is an amazing... We are talking about the drum. Finish that statement, though. Yeah. <laughs> that's a sound, that's a sound you know, bite. Finish I mean, that she, statement. She, Karen Carpenter up, is she, a... I mean... <laughs> We're talking about Killer drumming, not, not naked. Right. Right. Yes, 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 yes. I mean, unbelievable talent she had. And no one even knows that. It's I keep forgetting she's a drummer. She, amazing drummer. Um, look it up. YouTube it. Her solo's incredible. Hashtag Karen Carpenter. <laughs> Boom. My mom used to wake me up for school, but I didn't want to get up by playing the Carpenter's Christmas record really loud on my stereo. <laughs> Could see and my I'd get out of bed and be like, what the fuck? There's one you play, she's playing Timbali, she goes drum set, she runs over to another go. drum set with her family. And, and that, that's <laughs> amazing, amazing. My mom would play Amy Grant to get me up. Well, that's and, cool. I, uh, and I love it. Go again, yeah. the Amy Grant. Dude, that's all. Amy's about greatest Grant. hits are is still like my top five albums of all time. Where did okay. Amy Grant? So, he talks it's, about all time. Man. 
I Bobby love Star. Grant. Jersey. Came to BB King. No, Jersey. We talked about it too. Jersey. That's where it started. Amy Grant, dude. Oh, I'm trying to remember what gigs. Go ahead, Pop. Matt Pop. talks about Amy Grant. And then yeah. What do we got? <laughs> go ahead, do it. Dude, some of those bass lines and those tunes oh, are just... Uh, oh, my God. Amy Grant and Karen Carpenter, man. Here we are. You never know. I love it. She's fantastic. What? Oh, no. no. Uh, RJ Scouten, who uh, I debuted one of his new songs last week on my show. Oh, Native. <laughs> uh, he says, love you all, especially Tommy. RJ. He's in uh, What's up, North buddy? Carolina. Oh, good for him. Huh? Yeah. Enjoy it. Cool. And uh, well, that's a good question. I can't read. Too uh, Keith Augustine says, uh, Keith. What, what contemporary artists do you emulate uh, guitar playing after? If you uh, do. I don't feel like I really emulate anyone. There are some young cats. I mean, I, I don't know. I saw this video of this young kid the other day playing a Firebird. Remember we were talking oh, about it? It, yeah, it was kid, like 11 yeah. years old, and it was awesome. Amazing. It was awesome. Yeah. Uh, those He's are the, the kind Dustin. of those are the people that I, I used to be young. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's, there's cats like Gary Clark Jr. I was gonna say yeah, like yeah, those, yeah. you know, yeah. Marcus King, yeah, Marcus Gary King. Clark Jr. Mm. Um, those are the dudes that inspire me because they're great. they're doing exactly what we're you know what we're all doing we're all doing it and it's, you know they're doing it on the next level and it's. Yeah, man. You know, Gary Clark, Marcus King. Who else is really cool? There's so many, man. It's tough, man. I listen to a lot of stuff. Uh, you know, I just listened to the new Queens of the Stone Age record like a million times. But I told times. you about the, the Gary Clark so quote. His mother said, you know, you got to have a plan B. You can't just play mm -hmm. guitar. He goes, i got a plan B. If I don't make a guitar, I'll play drums. It's <laughs> <laughs> very true. i got a plan <laughs> Boom! I'm obsessed. That was just, I love it. That's awesome. That's Are you guys uh, pumpkin? That's this guy right here. Girl? Play drums, Smash bass, anything. Smash yeah. <coughs> oh, I mean, uh, oh, have you heard the uh, the William Patrick Corgan album? I did not. It's really good. I just mm -hmm. picked it up this week. William Patrick. William Patrick. Wow. Corgan. Okay. Let's see, really see what he did there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, you know? he's going. Uh, he he's going proper. Um, I PG. saw them. I saw them. No, I just, I just ask because it's, it's good. I just saw I just them like two years speech. ago yeah. at Camden, and they were awesome. They were powerful. It was great. Yeah. Just and, him. Yeah. yeah. By himself? Just yeah. acoustic? Yeah. Really? It's good. George Thorogood put out a solo blues record. Just really? him on my... Yes. Are you a fan of him? Next question. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we're, we're, we're talking about uh, <laughs> you know, that Briggs one. Farm a little bit and stuff like that. You guys... When you're playing a festival, you're surrounded by blues legends. People have been doing this a long time, that kind of thing. The real deal. Is that intimidating? Is that inspiring? Is that, you know, what, what, what is your it's both. reaction to that? It's I, yeah, really it's not both. necessarily intimidating, but, I mean, inspiring, you, you feel, definitely. you know, it gives you inspiration, I think. Yeah, I mean, totally. I guess that's what inspiring means. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, not so much intimidating, um, but definitely, yeah, we're just, yeah, so we're, happy. yeah, we're thankful. We're, we're around our family, like, yes, yeah, so we're our, thankful our family to be did. there. We don't know yet. We're, <laughs> yeah, we're, I mean, we're just happy to be part of the team, man, you know, That's it. we're just happy to be on the team of any genre, you know, that accepts us. We're just happy to be there. That's it. We're happy to be on the team. Janine uh, says, my love mother? to torture my son. So much fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's your mom? That's uh, my mother, Jeannie. man. Yeah. Well, she's band mom. So. <laughs> she's the band well, she'll mom. definitely band enjoy mom. this episode, which is oh, absolutely. Been, uh, uh, quite a roast of <laughs> oh, poor Dustin. The roast. <laughs> Dustin roast. Um, hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> You no, know, is are there other kinds that you know? Because uh, ob obviously you don't want to stick to the that same sort of uh, festival all the time. Are there other things you you guys like to do? Are there other festivals you'd like to play or yeah, anything I mean, you have coming up that's maybe outside of that? Two thousand eighteen is going to be really good. That you know, this summer we have a lot of things cooking. So, um, you know, festival wise and and venue wise, and two thousand eighteen is going to be is going to be great. We're excited, you know. Um, you know, new record. It's gonna be cool. 
but yeah there's going to be lots of lots of new festivals and things to tackle and make memories there too and be thankful yeah. that we're there yeah i mean that's, I mean, it. that's it i just keep saying like you know as long as you're ahead of where you were a week ago Every a month ago a year mm -hmm. ago you know, we don't, you, know, you, know, you, know like, you don't have to be big. playing you know msg you know next year or have these like grandiose schemes it's just yeah as long as you're having fun enjoying it and creating content and engaging people and enjoying what you're doing and like i said you're you know just you know a step over a half a step above where you were that same time last year that, that's forward progress you know it doesn't matter whether it's a yard or a mile forward progress is forward progress so yeah that's just but that's, we will be playing msg yeah. Yeah, I mean, not, not, <laughs> not next year. But. <laughs> well, like you said, I mean, well, well, I mean, I guess what I'm trying to say is, like, a lot of it's very easy. <laughs> it's very easy to get down on yourself in this line of work. Sure. At any artist, whether you're a musician, yeah. a painter, that's what yeah. I meant a to poet. say before too. I, I like not only is the musician scene locally awesome, but like just arts in general, man. The painter, mm. the painters, and the the chefs. Like this, right. fucking, it's crazy. A lot man. of creativity. Like I mean, yes. literally, like you could come to this town, start a record label, start a food network, start, and just have content for everything. Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? In, in it, in a very short time, it's like a. Um, not to interrupt you, I wanted to get that out. Yeah, no, I'm just like. What were you saying? <laughs> Just like on stage, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Cut my bass a little short. Uh, uh, that's not. I was a dud articulating what I wanted to articulate to the audience, Dustin. Okay. I will, no, that will never, never cut. Yeah, no, yeah. so much. I have to say Matt is wrong on that one. Because yeah. I am chilling. Yeah, it's like no offense. It's so time for you. a bass solo. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got to pull him back. Yeah, <laughs> got to pull him back. I'm Dustin's like, what the hell's Dustin? Please yeah. come back. Well, I think I'm done. Yeah. Now you, you're not done yet. No, I think so. Well, when I start when I start doing the hip thrust is what he usually sort of has to step yeah. in. Well, I mean, that's for the best. But, for uh, oh, babe, you gotta give what do we got? What? But, uh... Yeah, Will, I thought we were friends. Uh, <laughs> FM Kirby Center said, says, I'm just tuning in now. I, I, I added now. I'm just tuning in. How many times has Popko mentioned alt natives? Oh, I didn't do a... Hey, Will, I didn't do a, I have to give a big thank you to oh, Will, though, for, for having... For allowing us to come into you know his his house and and do this Stevie Ray thing and the things he's done at the FM Kirby Center have been wonderful and uh, thanks Will we'll have a drink on Saturday and celebrate awesome yeah uh, all it's, it's been twenty two times <laughs> <laughs> all natives I, I think yeah, going back to, to what you were saying self. before I think a lot of people think if if you say things like local band that that's that's like a down thing like you're putting it down like oh they're just a local band as opposed to a national act well, and things I, like that and I, I think people have that mentality i mean the, the the term struggling artist exists for a reason mm -hmm. okay i mean like i said whether you're a musician a sculptor a painter uh, a chef whatever i mean it, you can it's very easy to get discouraged along the path because you know whether you know however you measure the metrics of success you know you've you're not hitting where you thought you would be yeah. six months ago or a year ago or whatever like that. So, and it just sort of comes full circle to what Dustin said. It's like you don't do it because, you know, you're not doing it for the glory. You're not doing it for the money. You're just doing it because, hey, it's that's good. what we're all born from. You that's know, what California. You, that's what you do. For this weekend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a very <laughs> interesting <laughs> thing, though, Rich, because like, like I think like, you're only a local band in your town, right? Like. You know, Queens of the Stone Age is a local band in, 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 in the, California in their desert. Yeah. <laughs> right. Do you know what I mean? And then, right, like, yeah. I, I guess Kurt Cobain was local. Like, Nirvana was local in Seattle. So, like, in Seattle, they were a local band. So, if you're, so you're only a local called gig, a local You just have to drive an hour and just, like, spin around a circle. <laughs> back up. Hey, we made a travel. Now it's right. very true. Now Question If we go to Scranton, are we still local or is that still the valley? I don't know. Yeah, I think over 30 that's minutes. A, we're, different we're, we're, it's a different beast, we're good, man. man. Yeah. Yeah. Cross, I don't know. Cross that rock line. Stars, yeah. You crossed that into one, one yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, there you go. Once you get there to mile marker 177 on yeah, anybody, you're, that's like, uh, you're out of town, road, baby. Road. Yeah. Yeah. We're on the road. <laughs> Travel. 2017 tour. Get a van. You better now. Not logo anymore. Pack the van. Yep. That's a good point. It's funny. Yeah, I think local band is just like your just, local band in the town that you're local to. Yeah. 
Yeah. I don't think. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's like anybody. They think something's better if it comes. It comes from, from somewhere else. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, you're from, you know, it's just, just the way it is. We yeah. all know that, you know. And we don't just do it. Honestly, man, any of that shit, we just don't give a fuck about. No. You know, it's just. We just plug our shit in and we play our loud blues and music. And that's it, man. Stuff. That's, that's it. And there it well, is. We try not to think about that stuff too much because it's very easy to do that. Mm -hmm. and then just get well, guess what? Breaking Ben was local. They are. And they're there still, what are you talking about? They still are. Yeah, yeah well, what I'm saying is it's a local band. Right. right. They're still, I mean, it's still exactly. Men's local, local title band. Title fight. You know Tiger's job. I mean? um, Doing big things. Yeah. They're all local. And I'm okay with that. You got to come somewhere, man. Yeah, you're right. local to stanky yeah. in the coal miners. You got a stanky in the coal miners. <laughs> local band, local. huge recording polka band. Okay, you, you know, know, like local. we're talking like top tier. Yeah. Like, okay, so back in the day, the Lear Brothers band, local band out of the Surrey, way back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Lifer. Who, who wrote Timothy? That was um, Dakota. Dakota. They didn't, they didn't land. Local the band. Kelly Brothers. What did you say? Kelly. There you go. <laughs> I was in their studio. Way, 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 way back. <laughs> In 72? Yeah, somewhere like that, yeah. yeah. We won't say the year. The year. I was there. <laughs> so, in other, in other words, that was like, oh, uh, as, as we uh, we start to, to wrap up, yeah. uh, support local. You know, it's so important to, to pay attention to what's going support on in everything. hometown. You know, don't just... Don't just blow this stuff by and take it for granted. Because not this, this stuff doesn't happen here. I've had a lot of friends... Who you know move out what they think are greener pastures, and they come back and go, oh, yeah, you know, I thought there was no culture in this town, and then I went to a town that literally has no culture, right. <laughs> and came back and realized, like, holy the crap, there is a lot always to do. greener, There's a lot going yeah. on. Yeah. The grass is always greener for some reason, and, mm -hmm. and I mean, I mean, I, it I, is. <laughs> I mean, like you think it is. The human mind, for right. some reason, always wants something that it doesn't have, and then. It, well, I think the human. Mm -hmm. We always take things for granted. Obviously, I. I think people might have taken uh, the Vans Warped Tour. Sure. To come in, to montage every year. Every what? single year. Next and they, year and last they, year. And they keep, they keep skipping it and going, you know what? Uh, not not this year, anything? next year, ne this after year, next year. Yeah. Yeah. This year yeah, is they the just, last year. They just year. announced that. Uh, we were actually <coughs> the first ones locally to break that news. Oh. oh. Uh, anyway. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to stay up to date. Deep scene, you heard it here. Yeah, any piece here first. All natives. Uh, this week's going to be all Dustin Douglas and the Electric Gentleman. <laughs> or, or none. The whole okay. hour. Or none of be, that. I'm coming live. We're you just you can pay for that. Uh, we, can, we can. Yeah. <laughs> we know. <laughs> <laughs> I will gladly take your money. Welcome to radio, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I think Taylor Swift has owned Starbucks radio for the past three fucking days. <laughs> she can. Yeah, she, she is. Does. If you go to ship a package, her face is on UPS's website. Is it really? I yeah. swear to God, look it up right now. <laughs> Josh Turner knows that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but what does Taylor Swift know? About? I don't know how that translates what? into Logistics. record sales. But She's local yeah. to Reading, oh, wow. <laughs> wherever she was from. I don't know. She may not be local. Local artist, Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> UPS. UPS dot com. I mean, mobile might be a different scene, but I'm talking sure. desktop. You know. But uh, point being, uh, if you didn't see that news, uh, I don't know if you've noticed lately, uh, but a lot of our, uh, we, we, we built our audience three years ago with the help of Facebook, uh, very much so. And obviously we still live stream on Facebook, here we are right now. But a lot of people aren't seeing our stuff recently uh, because Facebook has changed their algorithms over the last year. <laughs> And so uh, anybody who runs a page, I'm sure you guys know, is a band page and everything else, mm -hmm. uh, less and less people see those posts all the time. And they lessen it more and more, and they want to charge you more and more uh, to, for, you, for people to pay to see those posts. So if you like shows like this, if you, if you enjoyed tonight's conversation, if you enjoy the content that we put out, uh, consider adding us to, there, there's a notification at the top of uh, any PA Scenes Facebook page. You can put see first. Uh, under the follow section there and you can see our posts first so you can make sure that you actually see all these coming in every time we go live every time we put out content you'll you'll see it first and constantly like and share this stuff uh you, we can't take that for granted either because if nobody reacts to the content then it gets buried and unfortunately a lot of good stories that we put out will sometimes get buried because 
nobody liked it, nobody commented, nobody shared it. So it's so important for you guys to do that. So uh, if you like this show, share it as soon as you can share the link now while we're talking, or you can share it after the show. Amen. Or like it, or love it. Yeah, that's not a chat. You, you can cry, you can cry even about it. you can give us an angry react if you yeah. want. That's Whatever. that's cool too. Whatever, yeah. just some kind of reaction would would be great. <laughs> oh, you're right. T Swift. There she is. I'm not a liar. I'm not, I may be a lot of things, but I am not a liar. <laughs> Look at her. That's been there for months, dude. That's so weird. But you can win concert tickets. That's all well and good, but I, I'm not going to that site thinking I'm going to get concert yeah, tickets. Yeah, well, you know, know what I mean? Like, I that's hate, such a weird... I hated T-Swift, oh, and I love T-Swift, and now yeah. I'm like kind of like, uh, yeah. I don't yeah. know about you, T-Swift. <laughs> How do you feel about T-Swift? Yes. Well, get Swift, get T Swifty. <laughs> <laughs> there was a conversation we had the other day get about Swifty, it, bro. which <laughs> I won't mention right now. But um, uh, no, I sort of. Uh, I've not heard any of her new music. I I, I don't really care for it because my boss at work, when he's having a bad day, <laughs> that's his go-to thing. Is he listens to Taylor Swift? Mm -hmm. It just blasts it from album, right? his office. Okay, yeah. so. Sorry, Gary. Letting the world know that you're a Taylor Swift fan, and that's no, what you I'm do. No, I'm not mad at that, Gary, because um, I appreciate. Yeah, but he sings it though too. He sings along with it. Okay, and it yeah, I mean, he's just feel great. Well, it helps. You I shake, it helps you shake it off. Uh, oh, Oof. see now that's not like I'm, if I, if it's gonna be a pop song, it better yeah, be jokes. like it better be like an ink stain on my clothes. Like it better just. It's just the popular <coughs> stuff is just it's made to be addictive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a yeah, I mean, there's a yeah. That's what it's, that's what it's that's a yeah, yeah, that song. I'm gonna turn that song off. Shake it off. <laughs> Shake it off. Anybody who's been oh, in my yeah. car knows that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mad at that. No, I mean it's it's not. I mean, I over the past, I'd say, <laughs> two to three years, I've had this like new appreciation for pop music. Mm. I don't know why it just happened, and I mean, in my car, I just. I don't even listen to tapes or CDs, or I don't plug in the aux on my phone or anything like that. I just yeah. listen to radio, and I don't know. I love it. Will that, that leak into uh, <laughs> anything you guys are working on now, do you think? Uh, those pop influences? Uh, yeah. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Whatever Maybe even subconsciously. You know? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I fight those urges all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> those demons. I fight those urges yeah. all the time. I think that, but I mean, that's the bottom line. We play music because we're the biggest music fans. Yeah. And yeah. that's it. Every single one of us. Yeah. Well, I don't understand what else there is to really talk about. <laughs> it, was, it, it, it was funny. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you know, us doing what we do, we, you know, our weekends are usually playing gigs and traveling to various venues to play those shows and whatnot and uh, uh, Dustin and I went did a uh, like a day trip to the Finger Lakes up in New York to like That's romantic. Up or, yeah, yeah. It wasn't just us. <laughs> oh no 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 just us. Yeah 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 yeah. I was That's, not there. Yeah 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 yeah. Romantic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That's real cute. Not there. No, no, no. It's got a heart shaped tub too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, so what if we did? Nine no, uh, on. It, it, it was a bad. It, it was it, it was part of a day outing with a bunch of other couples where you know Dustin and his woman and me and my mm -hmm. wife and uh, several other couples. Big Dave's bachelor. It was actually yeah, uh, Dave Fisk, our, our the graphic designer. Yes, the the man behind the fourth, all our graphic design. The is fourth amazing. member. <laughs> yeah, he is the fourth member of the band in a lot of ways. Him and our. Lovely manager Ginny, who's sitting behind the camera. Behind the camera. Running and the she's camera. gonna go, yeah, she's gonna go scurry. So, anyways, so we're up, we're going, you know, we're with this crew of people, and we go up to the Finger Lakes for a day of wine tasting and hoot and nanny and, you know, getting silly and all this stuff. Yep. And we're having a good time. And we're at like the first or second winery, and Dustin turns to me, he's like, is this what regular people do on the weekends for fun? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I guess so. I don't know. How <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. would I know? Yeah. Um, I'm like, you know, like I said, because it, it's funny. It's, 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 you know, it's because this is what we do. You know, like I, you know, yeah. my Saturday night is getting up on stage and playing right. my, playing my heart out and, you know, like. Do my thing. Do yeah, my thing. And, I mean, yeah. You know, yeah. This is what regular people do on the weekends. <laughs> I just, yeah, I looked around for a bit. I took it all in. Just around. <laughs> we could probably wrap yeah. it up with them going on a, a lover's 
weekend. Yeah, I don't yeah. think there's much more to say than me and Matt's <laughs> outing. To the, yeah, I know. It's between them two. <sighs> and I got to piss so it's bad. So, <laughs> do I. <laughs> just, so do That's what I. you guys do. Is you guys it's like have yeah, a, it's five, like a beer piss challenge. Yes. yes. A beer How long can you hold up? When are you going to do those a Pocky Chip challenge here, man? The chip... They're like 40 bucks a chip. Now. Is that how much they really are? Yeah. Why don't you like hit them up? What do you Sponsor yeah. these. There you you go. gotta like, yeah. Send us some chips. <laughs> Send these boys some chips and we'll f eat them. Eat them. Any dude, like <laughs> the guys you that you guys know that. So the Pocky chip challenge is like, it's a ghost pepper chip, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like the. I mean, it's like no. Why would I do that? No, I mean, I'm not doing it. I'm not, we're not. Gonna, I'm not gonna be here. For I'm about, yeah, but yeah. I think that you guys should watch it. Yeah, I'll watch the shit out of that. that. I'm like, I'm a, I'm a real man. I keep the spicy chip. You no, know. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see Shaq? Do Charlie, it? yeah, cool. Shaq can't do it. I saw Shaq do it. <laughs> that was good. But the other dude that does it that has that void tattoo on is the big guy. Did you see him do it? No. And he put hot sauce on top of it. <laughs> it didn't end well. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Didn't end well. Good. Thank you guys for having us. Yes. Yeah. Thank absolutely. you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Saturday night, FM Kirby Center. Yeah. yeah. Play some Stevie Ray Vaughan for all y'all. Support local Boom. music. Yes. Yeah. Buy local. View local. Yeah. See local. Absolutely. Listen local. Yes. These guys. Everything. Uh, yeah. DustinDouglasMusic.com. I gotta pee. Thank you, everybody. We'll have a good night. <laughs>